Hey guys, it's James here from eBass Guitar. In today's bass guitar lesson, I'm going to show you how to play five legendary soul bass riffs as played originally by the incredible Donald Duck Dunn. If that sounds good, make sure you check out this lesson all the way to the end. <laughs> Hey guys, it's James here from eBass Guitar and in today's lesson I'm going to show you how to play five legendary soul bass riffs as originally recorded by the incredible Donald Duck Dunn. If this is your first time on the eBass Guitar YouTube channel and you enjoy this lesson, make sure you subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button that's somewhere around the screen because we release a lesson just like this every single week. So Donald Duck Dunn was the house or session bass player for Stax Records in the 1960s and literally played on hundreds upon hundreds of soul hits. Last week we released a lesson showcasing his work on the Blues Brothers album, but this week we're going to dig deeper and show you five more riffs from his incredible back catalogue. First of all, let's give you a taster of what we're going to cover today. So guys, just before we hit the lesson content, I want you to know there's a completely free PDF so you can see all of the Donald Duck Dunn riffs we're discussing today written out in standard notation and tab. There's a link in the description where you can grab your free copy. So riff number one is in the Midnight Hour, originally recorded by Wilson Pickett in 1965. So this is what the bass riff sounds like. So the thing I've always loved about Duck Dunn's bass lines is they're often very simple and very straightforward, yet they're highly thought out and highly crafted, so they work as an integral part of the song. And the riff to Midnight Hour is no exception to this. So let's take it apart. The riff is only basically two beats, and it sounds like this. And it's based over a simple triad. So the first two beats are an E chord, and the notes are a quarter note of E, and then we have two eighth notes, which are G sharp and a B, so it's this. Then we take that exact pattern and put it over an A chord, which the notes would be an A, a C sharp and an E. And then we re repeat this one bar round. And that's the fundamental riff for In The Midnight Hour. But later on, he moves that riff up to a B and you can hear him play exactly the same pattern. So if you wanna put it into B, it would be B, uh, D sharp and an F sharp, so you get this pattern. Then to an A chord. So it's a great riff that you can move through various chords. So let's hear what this sounds like with the drum track. So riff number two is Mr. Pitiful, and this was originally recorded by Otis Redding in 1965. It has a one bar riff which sounds like this. So we're in the key of C here, and the first note is a C, then the next note is an A, which is placed on the last 16th note of beat two. And then the next note is placed on directly on beat three. And we end up with this rhythm. So one, two, and three, four. One, ta, ba, dum, ta, dum, ta, ba, dum, like that. Then the last three notes of the riff are an A, a G, and an A. And they're placed on beat three and beat four, and beat four and respectively. So the whole riff sounds like this, and I'll loop it too. So that falls really nicely under the hand. It gives a really distinct shape. And what we can do is move it through the other chords which are in Mr. Pitiful. So also move it up to a G at the fifth fret on the D string. So we end up with this. And then down to the F. So this is a riff that you can move all over the neck. So it's super, super flexible. So let's hear what this sounds like in context with the drums. Thank you. 
So Ain't No Sunshine is based on a core two bar groove. So let's take that apart to begin with. So it starts off with two beats of A at the fifth fret. So one, two, and then we go down to an open E for a beat and then G for a beat like that. And that's our first bar. So it sounds like this, one, two, three, four. And then we play an A for three beats, one, two, three. And then just at the end of the third beat on the last 16th note, we play an open E. And then we play a G and a G sharp as two eighth notes on beat four and beat four and respectively. And that takes us back round to the beginning of the riff again. So let's hear what this sounds like. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Now, the fun really happens when you start putting it through the eight bar chord sequence. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write that out in the free PDF which comes with this lesson. There's a link in the description below, but let's hear what the eight bar sequence sounds like with the drum track. So guys, if you're enjoying this lesson, make sure you jump over to ebassguitar.com and check out the Bass Lab Plus. The Bass Lab Plus is a full step-by-step -step program designed for beginner to intermediate bass guitar players, which teaches you everything from playing your very first notes to fully constructing walking bass lines across the whole of the fingerboard. So to take the Bass Lab Plus for a spin, completely free for 14 days, make sure you click the link, which is in the description below. Riff number four is Knock On Wood, which was originally recorded by Eddie Floyd in 1967. It has a one bar riff which sounds like this. This riff is a great exercise in placing off beats. So let's take it apart. So it starts off with an A on beat one and we hold that for one and a half beats. And then halfway through the second beat we play an F sharp at the 11th fret on the G string. And then halfway through the third beat we play an E at the ninth fret on the G string two. So we end up with this one, ba, ba. So practice that to begin with. And then the final note of the riff is a C sharp at the 11th fret on the D string on beat four and. So we end up with this. Like that. And then later on in the song, Duck Dum moves it into E and we can just use exactly the same shape by playing the root at the seventh fret on the A string. So we end up with this. Like that. So let's hear what this riff sounds like in context with the drum track. Riff number five is Born Under a Bad Sign and was originally recorded by Albert King in 1967. It has a two bar riff which sounds like this. For me, this is where the world of soul music and blues started to intersect and Duck Dunn created a magnificent line here. So let's take it apart. We're working over the chord of C sharp minor. So let's take the first bar apart and it sounds like this. One, two, and three, and four. So the first three notes are a C sharp for a beat and a half. One, two, and then we hit an F sharp and then a G like that on beat three. So we end up with this. One, two, and three. And then on beat three and we play a B like that. And then on beat four, directly square in the middle of beat four, we play an E like this. So this is the first bar. Then the second bar sounds like this. So let's take that apart. Let's play the first three notes. So we start off with a C sharp for a beat and a half. One, two, and then halfway through the second beat, we play an F sharp, and then directly on the third beat, we play a G sharp. So it sounds like one, two, and three. 
And then the last three notes based on plate three and four and four and are a B, a C sharp, and then an E like that. So the whole of the second bar sounds like this. Let's play that again. So let's put the two bars together. So let's hear what this sounds like in context with the drum track. Guys, that's the end of today's bass guitar lesson. If you've enjoyed this lesson, make sure you download the free PDF so you can see all of the riffs we've discussed today written out in standard notation and tab. There is a link in the description below where you can grab your free copy. Also, if you're looking to push your bass guitar playing forward, make sure you jump over to eBass Guitar and check out the Bass Lab Plus. Bass Lab Plus is a step-by-step -step program designed especially for beginner to intermediate bass guitar players that teaches you all the most important skills you need. There's a link in the description below where you can join free today with a 14-day trial. Cheers, I've been James from eBass Guitar and I'll catch you next time.